Okay, welcome back. Um, I'm now going to answer question number two from the January 2021 International A-Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P2 paper. Um, this question here is a question about a curve, a cubic curve, y equals x cubed minus x squared minus 16x plus 2. And we are asked to use calculus to find the x coordinates of the stationary points of this curve. Okay, so now, first of all, we should understand what a stationary point is. Now, a stationary point is a point of zero gradient. It could either be a maximum, could be a minimum, could be a point of inflection where it reaches zero gradient and then goes back up again, or it's going down, zero gradient goes down again. could be any of those things. Those are points which are called stationary points where the gradient becomes zero. So we know that at the stationary points, whenever you have a stationary point, okay, um, we can say that the gradient dy dx is equal to zero. So the first thing we need to do is to find dy dx. So we take the function and we differentiate it. So we're going to have 3 times x squared, multiply by the power, take 1 from the power, minus 2 times x, the power of 1, you don't have to write the 1, minus 16. The x term is dropped, and the x the, the x is dropped, you just left with the coefficient, and for the 2, the constant is just completely dropped. Okay, so the gradient of minus 16, x is minus 16, and the gradient of 2 is 0. Okay, so you've got dy dx equals 3x squared, minus 2x minus 16. Now we have to find the x coordinates of the stationary points. So what we need to do here is we need to um, equate this to 0 first. So we know then dy dx equals 0, so I'm going to put 3x squared minus 2x minus 16 equals 0. So I have to solve this quadratic equation and find the values of x for which this is true. Now you can do this in multiple ways. You can do this by using the quadratic formula. You can do this by just guessing um, different values that could go in the brackets. You know, you can do some sort of guess and check. You can split the middle term. There's lots of ways of doing this. I personally prefer this method here, which I call the window method. So what I like to do is to do just draw little kind of grid and then I use that to work out the um, factorization of this. So what I do is I say okay I know that there's 3x squared I'll write it in the top row, top left and the minus 16 is in the bottom right. I know that these two numbers that I have to write in these two bo boxes must add up to give me minus 2x so the sum of those has to be minus 2x. So then I've got 3x squared minus 2x minus 16. But I also know that the product of these two will always be the same as the product of those two. Always going to be like that. That's a pattern that we'll notice when we're expanding brackets. So using this grid method, the product of these two numbers is the same as the product of these two. These two terms. So uh, 3 times minus 16 is minus, that's going to be uh, 30, that's minus 48x squared. So these two numbers must also multiply to give you minus 48x squared, but they have to have a sum of minus 2x. So the difference between them has to be 2. So you think of all the ways of getting 48. I think I've thought about it already. 6 times 8 is 48. So the two numbers must be 6 and 8, and it's going to have 8 as a negative one, so I'll have minus 8x and plus 6x. Those two multiply to give me um, negative 48x squared, and they add to give me minus 2x. So I know I've got the right two numbers here. So let me just move these out of the way. Now, what I do is I just take one of these, um, like this row, for example, and I say, what's the common factor of 3x squared and 6x? Well, that's 3x. And that's all I need now. I can say, OK, 3x times something gives me 3x squared. Well, that must be x. And 3x times something gives me 6x. Well, that's plus 2. And then I can say x times something gives me minus 8x. Well, that's minus 8. And you can just make a quick check to see that this works out. Minus 8 times 2 gives me minus 16. It works out. So I have my factors, 3x minus 8 and x plus 2. Okay, this is a way that I like to do my factorizing. There's different ways. You could split the middle term and to the same two numbers. So you could say 
3x squared minus 2x minus 16 equals 0. And the same kind of thinking, you think two numbers are multiplied to give you minus 48 and add to give you minus 2x. Then you think, oh, that must be 3x squared minus or plus 6x minus 8x minus 16 equals 0. That's probably more sensible way to split it up. See, so the same two numbers that I found here, those are the same two terms here. And then you take the common factor, which is 3x from these two. You're left with x plus um, 2. And then you've got minus. Common factor from these two is 8. And you've got x, again, minus times plus gives you minus. So it's plus 2 equals 0. So you're left with x plus 2 times 3x minus 8 equals 0. So it's exactly the same answer. It's just a slightly different way of doing it. This is the grid method. This is like splitting the middle term. You can also do it just by guessing. Just, okay, I know it must be a 3x and an x to give me 3x squared. Then you think of all the ways of getting 16, and you look at the combinations, but whatever way you do it, it's fine. So now we got the two values of x, therefore, are if either 3x or minus 8 equals 0, that means x equals 8 over 3, or x plus 2 equals 0, so x equals minus 2. So the x coordinates of the stationary points... They didn't ask us to find the, the, the coordinates themselves, like the y coordinates as well. Uh, x equals 8 over 3 and x equals minus 2. Those are the answers for part A. Um, it didn't say find the coordinates themselves, like the, the whole coordinate. So that's enough. I don't have to go any further. If they said find the coordinates, not specifying just the x coordinate, you would then re replace the x in the original equation with what you found. And give you the that will give you the y coordinate for that each of those points. Okay, so that's part A done. Now we can go on to part B. Now part B says justify by further calculus the nature of all the stationary points of the curve. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the second differential. So we know that the first differential is dy dx equals 3x squared minus 2x minus 16. And we know that the stationary points are x equals minus 2 and x equals 8 over 3. So I've got to find what's called the second differential. Okay, that's dy dx. The second differential tells us basically um, how the, the gradient is changing. So this is the gradient function. This tells you about the gradient of the function, the rate of change of y with x. What's happening to y in res with respect to x? How y changes with respect to x? Now, the second differential, d squared y, dx squared, tells us how the gradient is changing with respect to x. How the gradient is changing. Okay, so we, first of all, we've got to differentiate this a second time. That's going to give me 2 times 3, which is 6. 6x minus 2. So this, this, this little expression here tells us the rate of change of the gradient. Okay, if the rate of change of the gradient is something which is... Um, Negative, means that means the gradient is decreasing. So here the gradient starts off high, and it's getting less. It becomes zero. It becomes negative. This is something where you have um, d squared y over dx squared is, is something which is negative. Because the gradient is starting off positive. It's becoming to zero. It's going to be negative. So it's decreasing. The gradient is decreasing. The rate of change of the gradient is decreasing. Whereas something like this... It starts off negative, a negative gradient, it becomes zero and it becomes positive again. So this is a case where the, when you've got the second differential is, is something which is positive, that we have a minimum in that case. So maximum is when this is something which is negative for that value of x, and a minimum is when you have something positive for that value of x. So when you put x equals minus 2 inside our function, you've got d squared y, dx squared equals 6 times minus 2, minus 2, which is minus 14. So we can say as d squared y over dx squared is less than 0, therefore x equals minus 2 is a maximum point. It's maximum. Okay, x equals minus 2 is a maximum point. Okay. And when you put x equals 8 over 3, you're going to have the second derivative dx d, d squared y over dx squared is equal to 6 times 8 over 3 minus 2, which is going to be something for sure, which is more than um, is positive. That's 16 minus 2, which gives you positive 14. So therefore, as 
d squared y over dx squared is greater than zero therefore x equals eight over three represents a minimum point okay and that's all we have to show um what would help us if we write this a bit more neater sorry about that my writing is going to pop right now so this was when it was less than zero so that was a maximum and this is when it's a minimum. Okay, so those are the, that's the answer to this question. Justify by further calculation the nature of all the stages. Yeah, that's it. So there we have finished this question number two. Um, this is all about the applications of differentiation. Okay, so um, other questions that you want to see from this paper, which is January 2021, you can find in this playlist. Questions that you might want to see from this particular topic of differentiation and its applications from P2 you can find in this playlist that will play over that will show up over here. Subscribe to my channel from this link and on the top of the page you can go to a card which will take you to another past paper for P2. Thank you for watching and see you soon.